You're listening to The Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. It's Friday, the 12th of May, and you know what that means. That's right, it's another episode of the Observing Eye podcast with me, David, your wonderful, eloquent, eclectic, and slightly esoteric host. So if you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new, welcome aboard. As always, I like to begin these episodes with a brief moment of reflection. So let's start by taking a few moments to contemplate the good things that have happened this week. And now, a moment for the not-so-good. So today I want to talk a little bit about habits and discipline. But I don't want to talk about it from the context of, of like neurology or creating structures in the mind and that kind of thing. I am not the go-to expert on that. And if you are interested in, in how that works, I would highly suggest someone like, like Andrew Huberman, for example, on his podcast, go and have a listen to some of that. He talks a lot more around the science of the brain. I'm going to come at it from a more esoteric and psychological viewpoint. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be telling you about, you know, the length of time you have to do things for habits to form and that kind of shit. That's, that's on other people. And I'm sure you know it anyway, you wouldn't be here otherwise. Right. So I want to talk about, and I'm giving away the keys to the kingdom here a little bit. I want to talk about apathy and agency. When it comes to us choosing to do things, I feel that there are, there is a, battle here between apathy and agency in the beginning at least Uh, if we with practice it feels like agency takes over but bear with me i'm just going to run through this idea and, and explain a few bits to you let's start by defining our terms then so apathy apathy that inherently immutable indifference that absence of interest the lack of concern a state of disconnection and unmotivation. We've all been there. I know I certainly have. And then we have agency, the counterpoint to apathy. Agency, our capacity to act independently, to make our own choices, to be proactive, to take control, to drive our lives rather than being passive passengers, just floating on the sea, being buffeted by what fate throws at us. So those are our terms, apathy to agency. So what happens when we choose apathy? And I say choose, and I'm sure there are those of you out there going, you don't choose to be apathetic. I beg to differ. But again, perhaps we can chat about that in the comments. I'd be interested to get a discussion going on that. So what what does apathy do to life? We all know this answer, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Just in case, apathy is stagnation. Simple enough, right? It's, it's us being stagnant. We don't grow. We don't want to learn. We don't want to improve. We don't want to make changes. We feel stuck. We feel trapped. Locked in this cycle of inaction and indifference. What about agency then? What does agency do? In my mind, agency empowers us. That's why I like agency. Agency is a good thing. When we exercise agency, we recognize that we do have control to an extent to actively shape our lives and where they're going. But again, this requires a bit of self-awareness, a bit of looking inward and understanding our direction and our desires and what we want from life. It's very, very difficult to have agency when we 
don't know what we want because then what's the aim what are we what are we pointing the agency towards so let's talk a bit about using agency to create discipline we've got to recognize first that agency is a tool to shape our behavior you might want to call it willpower yeah kind of interchangeable terms here willpower fueling agency fueling us moving forwards for fueling us growing and and changing our circumstance so agency enables us to establish routines it enables us to create habits and it gives us the prescience to make choices that align with the goals that we've set for ourselves the direction that we want to go in in life so speaking of goals then we've got to set goals in order to reach them and those goals have really got to be achievable it's no good me setting a goal that says by next year i will be pope like it's just not going to happen it's not an achievable goal i'm not even a catholic like it's just it's not a thing right so we need to measure our expectations a little bit when we're setting goals and try them try to go for something that's manageable saying in the next five years, I want to be a millionaire. Okay, that's, that's a wonderful ambition. It's a wonderful goal. But, you know, what's your plan? What's your strategy? You need to think around that a little bit. How are you going to get there? How are you going to change your mindset? How are you going to change what you're doing to get to that goal? How can agency serve you to reach that? And lastly, I want to talk about consistency. And I've talked about consistency before, obviously, because it's an important one much like compassion, self-awareness, and all that sort of jazz. So when we talk about discipline, discipline isn't like one single action of agency. Discipline is a consistent set of choices fueled by agency. We need to repeatedly make the good choices that align with the goals and directions that we want in life. So to summarize that, recognizing our ability to shape our behavior, setting clear achievable goals and being consistent. That's where agency comes into play to create discipline. How do we use agency to create habit, to cultivate habit then? So as I'm sure you're aware, agency is the foundation of forming habits. Habits are really powerful tools for change, but they don't happen by accident. They require intentional action. They require our agency. So if you want to start cultivating a new habit, begin small. Plants begin from the seed, right? So that's where we need to start. Don't go into this with your first steps being a huge change in your life because it's going to be so much more difficult to maintain that, to, to achieve that goal than it would be if you start small. So go for some, go for a little bite size, like an hors d'oeuvre, pick hors d'oeuvres of things, not like a main course. We want to be going for the canapes, not like a 20 pound steak to start with. Okay. So start small, easy to manage, far more sustainable in the long term. And then what we do is we, we gradually start to build on these small changes. And over time, the behavior becomes habitual. It kind of locks into the mind. And that's where I'm going to park that side of the, the neuropsychology bit. Um, and you can, you can look elsewhere for that. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's forming consistent behavior that form, forms consistent habits. And the consistent behavior being fueled by agency and choosing and making good choices, I should say, that are aligned with our goals and our expectations and our direction. So you can also think about linking a habit to an existing routine. By doing that, we create like a natural reminder to perform the new behavior that we want, the new habit which makes it a lot, a lot easier, obviously, to incorporate into life in general. So uh, let's think of an example. I'll take one from me, actually. 
a little bit of self-disclosure on this episode. So I have a desk job, as you can probably imagine, and I work from home. So I'm sitting here at the desk in front of the computer quite a lot. And I'll go and grab myself a coffee or a drink or something like that. Quite fairly regularly. I try not to drink too much coffee these days. And one of my goals that I set for myself is to do more exercise. Because I, I'll be honest, I haven't been doing enough, particularly after the whole pandemic, stay in your homes for two years thing that happened a little while ago. I really got out of the habit of doing it. And I set myself a, a small achievable goal to begin with. So I got myself these two little um, dumbbells. Well, they're not little. They're like five kilos. I started with a five kilo one, you know. Oh, look at my guns. So I started off two five kilo dumbbells and I put them just to the side of my desk. And I decided that every time I went up to get myself a drink, I do a couple of sets on these dumbbells just to try and try and, you know, get some kind of exercise in, uh, into, into playing to build up that routine. And it works a treat because firstly, they're by the desk so I can see them. They're a visual cue. It's like, ah, dumbbells, let's do a few, let's do a few reps. So the dumbbells are there. And then over time, because I'm starting to get into that mindset of, okay, cool, exercise. And I don't know why I stopped doing it. I love I, the, the feeling that you get after, after doing it is great. Um, I think it, it's just the agency, right? It's the agency to do it in the first place. So they're there, these, these visual cues. And I go, that's right, okay, I'm going to go and grab a coffee and I'm just going to do a few sets of this, 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 and this. Boom. And I would do that a number of times a day. And from there, it was like, okay, so I've started, I've started this bit. That's my hors d'oeuvre. My little, my little reps. And I'm like, okay, so how about I set an alarm on my phone for 1 p.m. and that's my lunchtime alarm. So how about instead of me making some lunch and just watching crap on YouTube for, for an hour, how about I do half an hour on the exercise bike before I eat? And then over time, that becomes a, a habit. So I'm doing the exercise bike before lunches now. And it's, it's those little things that are achievable. I'm not thinking, holy shit, I need to like bulk up and lose weight. Uh, and that, 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 becomes, that becomes a very, very different goal. The goals are small and they're steps. So it's, okay, start with this, the dumbbells. Then it's the exercise bike. And then it's, okay, we're going to get some rowing machine in there a few times a week. And it's, it's, trying, to, it's trying to build up the habit just gradually, like a, like a, like a, cur like a curve, right? We're not, we're not going binary, naught to one, fucking go hard or go home. It's a gradual curve. And we're, we're just upping, the, we're upping the, the, the expectations in each increment that we're, that we're moving. So that's... That's my experience. That may work for you. I'm just, you know, throwing some ideas out there because um, all I've got is my experiences, right? So, so that's what I'm working from. And lastly, talking, going back to talking about cultivating habits through agency, lastly, be patient with yourself. Um, th this applies to all things, but please be patient with yourself. These habits, as I just talked about in my experience, they take a little time to form and there's going to be setbacks. You know, there were, there were, Days, there are days where I, I don't feel like doing the exercise bike at lunchtime or I'm too busy doing shit and things like that. So there are days when there's going to be setbacks and, and afterwards I'm like, I probably should have made time for that really. And you, and you mark it up as a, as a, you know, not a failure, but like, okay, I didn't do that. Why didn't I do that? Where's the self-reflection? What drove me to take, to choose apathy over agency in that instance? What was the context understand why we're choosing apathy. Why did I choose not to do the exercise bike at lunch yesterday? What was going on there? Was it because I was really busy or was it because I couldn't be bothered? I tell myself I'm really busy, but let's, let's get real. I probably just couldn't be bothered yesterday, you know, but I, I, I smooth it over. I plaster over that can't be botheredness with I'm busy because telling myself that I'm busy sounds better than telling myself that I can't be bothered. Uh, so yeah, think about think about the context of of why we don't follow up with agency, uh, but don't beat yourself up about it. At the same time, be patient. These things take time. 
look at it, recognize it, acknowledge it, accept, okay, yeah, I chose that. And just try and do better next time. That's all we can do with anything. Just try and do better next time. Learn from setbacks and try again. That's all it is. That's all it is. And that, folks, is all I have to say on the subject of apathy and agency. Hopefully that's given you a few ideas that you can incorporate into your own journey or maybe just reflect on. Try and move ourselves away from that inertia of apathy into something a bit more proactive and uh, become agents of change in our own lives. Thank you, as always, for spending these quality 15 minutes with me. I always appreciate your company. Wishing you all a fabulous weekend. It is Friday after all. Uh, go out there and, and exercise your agency. Kick your apathy into touch uh, this weekend. Think of something that you can apply your agency to. Think about some goals. You know, what do you want? What do you want? That's a big question, isn't it? What do we want? Don't even think I entirely know the answer to that myself. But it's a journey, isn't it? That's what we're here for. It's all about the experience. Much love, everybody, and I'll catch you soon. You've been listening to The Observing Eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope that you found it useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writings or work around psychology and philosophy and general day-to-day living, please go and take a look at my substack, which is The Observing Eye dot substack dot com and that's i as in the letter not i as in each latinous organ through which you see take care everybody much love and i'll see you soon